Hello friends and welcome back. Let's talk about stanza number 14 of the poem, Elegy written in a country churchyard today. It's a bit difficult stanza to understand for it has got a lot of historical references. So let's try and understand. 14th stanza reads, some village Hampton that with dauntless breast the little tyrant of his fields withstood some mute in glorious Milton here may rest, some Cromwell guiltless of his country's blood. Let us first of all try to understand the meaning of the words, because you may find a few new words in it. Hampden actually refers to John Hampden, a famous landowner and an English politician who opposed Charles I's policies. He criticized Charles I's tax policies as, and was an alloy of Oliver Cromwell. The meaning of the word dauntless is fearless. Withstood means successfully tolerated the attack. Inglorious means causing shame or loss of honor. Milton is a famous figure, John Milton, a famous poet and pamphleteer. By mute inglorious Milton, the poet means a person who had great intellectual abilities but who was not able to explore them because of lack of education and lack of opportunities. Cromwell refers to Oliver Cromwell, the Prime Minister of England during 1645 to 1660. Cromwell was the leader of a group of people who were against King Charles I in the Civil War of England. Let's first of all read out the stanza again and then try to understand the meaning. Some village Hampton that with dauntless breast, the little tyrant of his fields withstood, some mute in glorious Milton here may rest, some Cromwell guiltless of his country's blood. The meaning is, some village Hampden who resisted the taxes imposed by the government fearlessly and saved his fields by fighting against the tyrannical rule may rest here. Some person with poetic talents like John Milton who remained silent and non-glorious because he did not get the education and opportunities may rest here. Some like Oliver Cromwell, the Prime Minister of England during 1645 to 1660 who was not guilty of bloodshed in the country unlike Oliver Cromwell. Poet refers to civil war in England in this stanza. He says that the people buried in the country churchyard might have done many things if they had got proper education and opportunities. He refers to dead villagers as the people with tremendous talents like John Hampton, John Milton and Oliver Cromwell. Three people poet speaks about in this stanza were the famous figures during the civil war and commonwealth period. While referring to John Hampden, Poet thinks that among the buried countrymen, someone was talented enough, like Hampden, to resist the tyrannical royal rule of Charles I and protect his fields as Hampden did. Some among the buried people was talented as Milton, but he was neither glorified like Milton, nor did he write anything and became famous intellectual like Milton because of the lack of opportunities. Someone among these dead country people might have been the person like Oliver Cromwell, but unlike Oliver Cromwell, he is not accused of bloodshed. This is how Poe tries to explain. Let's get back to the stanza again and try to understand it again. Some village Hampden, Hampden from the village, someone like Hampden, that with dauntless breast, as fearlessly, Hampden faced the royal rule, tyrannical royal rule of Charles I, Someone must have been there, here. The little tyrant of his fields withstood. Someone must have fought or must have been fighting for his fields as Hampden fought. Some village Hampden, someone like Hampden from the village, might have been fighting with the little tyrant of his field as King Charles I was the tyrant to the fields of Hampden. Some inglorious Milton, here must be resting some Milton, but this Milton is inglorious and mute because he has not spoken. Some Cromwell, Cromwell is Oliver Cromwell, might have been resting here if they had got the opportunities. But as they didn't get the opportunities, they couldn't do anything like Hampden did, Milton did and Cromwell did. This is how this stanza speaks. Now let's try to understand this with the help of a few comprehension questions. Who are the people referred to in this stanza by the poet? It's very simple. John Hampden, John Milton and Oliver Cromwell are the people referred to by the poet in this stanza. What does poet say about John Hampden? 
Port says that Hamden withstood the fields against the tyrannical rule, tyrannical rule of King Charles I. What do you think Port uses the term mute inglorious Milton for? Try to understand why does Port uses the term mute inglorious Milton? The poet uses the term mute inglorious Milton because the person who had talent like Milton could neither speak or write anything as Milton did and therefore remains inglorious. Why does poet call Cromwell guilty of his country's blood? See, Cromwell was the leader of a group of people who rebelled against the King Charles I in 1642 which resulted into the civil war and caused a lot of bloodshed. Therefore, Poet thinks that Cromwell was guilty of his country's blood. Hope you have understood this stanza.